I still don't like it. Arrest me again! All right, everybody. After her arrest, she's got some court dates coming up. The next one is on the 28th. Please mark your calendar for court support for Chris Divin's mother. Out barefoot every day, y'all. Okay? And she also goes on the first Saturday of the month in front of the Randolph police station, I believe. Mm -hmm. So just mark your calendars for the 28th in Quincy Court. Get more information on Mass Action's e um, website, right? Yeah, you can check Mass Action's website, MAAPB.org. All right, um, I'm going to ask and see if uh, we got anybody, maybe Selvin, you want to speak for the Year's Stamps group? All right, we got Brother Selvin Chambers coming up. What's up, beautiful people? I'm glad we could gather here today on this day, the King's Day. I'm uh, Selvin Chambers, and I'm here as a representative for the Justice Yuri Stamps group. And for those of you that don't know Yuri Stamps, he was a 68-year-old man that was murdered by the Framingham police, Paul Duncan. The gentleman was sitting in his house just a little bit of 10, 10 years ago, watching a basketball game. They came to the house looking for someone else. And the person they were looking for was not in the house. With a nonviolent search warrant. Yet and still, they decided to bring a SWAT team for a 68-year-old man, but they weren't looking for him. After it was all said and done, after flash bombs and all that stuff that happened for a nonviolent search warrant, Mr. Stamps lost his life. He was shot. And they deemed it an accident, right? That's some bullshit. How's that an accident? What are you coming with assault rifles for a nonviolent search warrant? And we just have to hold the system accountable for the brutality and the mistreatment of brown people. We have to hold them accountable for the mistreatment of innocent people. Because mm -hmm. it's got to stop. And the only way it's going to stop is people keep showing up at events like this here holding the system accountable. Beautiful people, hold the system accountable. Don't stop. Give it up. Yuri Stamp, say his name. Yuri Stamp! Say his name. Yuri Stamp! Say his name. Yuri Stamp! So yeah, because of the pressure that they've already started, really, since uh, this new uprising after George Floyd, uh, there's already been some motion by the state government to uh, re-examine. We say what? Reopen the case. What? Reopen the case. Reopen the case. What? Yeah, so we demand justice, uh, and we demand that these officers be prosecuted. Uh, I want to bring up uh, one of the unions who's been a longtime supporter of mass action and uh, really uh, at the forefront as well as an example of fight for justice for all. Um, the Bus Drivers Union. Uh, we got a president of the Bus Drivers Union, Andre Francois, gonna give some greetings. Give it up for Andre Francois and the Bus Drivers, US WA Local 8571. Good evening, sisters and brothers. I love you all, eh? I love the work that you're doing. My name is Andre Francois. I am the president of the School Bus Drivers Union. Every year we come out here in Dr. King's Day to continue with the uh, mass action against police brutality, to put the awareness out there. 
This year is no different. Beside all the good demands that Bob already put out there, which the first one is the uh, jail, jail killer cops. Yeah. Along with that, we, we, dem we also demand as a union to remove the police from the AFL-CIO union. Yeah. Police don't belong to unions if they have big police, if they have killer cops and they're brutalizing black folks and brown folks. So we want them to be out of the union. And we, 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 we hope this, this new government elect brings some justice. We open the, all the cases. I heard some good stuff this morning, but I'm missing all these demands out of here. Thank you very much, and I love you all. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right on, y'all. Give it up for the bus drivers union. They, they have had everybody's back in this city, and they continue going to need our support as they all confront COVID and uh, the crisis that we're all facing. So, I want to see if, uh, I don't know, we have another family here, the family of Justin Root. Um, I know she, okay, all right, she's got a, she got an old mic because of COVID concerns, but she gonna, she's going to say some words to us. The sister of Justin Root, Jennifer Banner Root. He was killed by a boss of police last February. Put killer cops in cell blocks, put killer cops in cell blocks, put killer cops in cell blocks. 
killing cops in cell blocks. Killing cops in cell blocks. All right, all right. Um, we got a group. I guess I want to call up uh, ID from Easton against racism. And uh, I don't know if uh, some of the other families are present, but if you are present, oh, that's what actually. We got Father Sheffield, the mother of Bo Ramsey, uh, White. He's, she's going to say a few words. So thanks for coming out. Whoa. I am out of breath because it took me a lot to get here. It is so good to see all these faces out here. I have on my mask. Um, Martin Luther King stood for justice and equality. And so far we have not achieved that as of yet. They pass laws that they want us to abide by, but they have to set precedent and abide by them first. You cannot enforce laws that police do not have to abide by because no one is above the law. My son, Burrell Ramsey, was shot and killed by a Boston police officer on August 21, 2012, 10 days after he turned 26. For eight years, first they were telling me I couldn't get the police in court. Then they were telling me I wouldn't get anybody to stand beside me and represent my son. I overcame those challenges and got that. But because of the climate that we are in, when we went to court, it was just nothing but racism, disregard for the law. We had, they had a uh, expert witness that they pay to come in and say whatever it is they want the, poli the police want them to say. The court was filled with police officers in, in, in dress blue. I don't know if that was a scare tactic or what it was, but you're not scaring me. It took eight years to get this case into court, and it took two weeks for them to find the police not responsible. I sat in the court when they picked the juror, and there were questions that were asked that should eliminate half of my jury. Out of the 12 jurors, number four fell asleep a couple of times. I watched number 12 raise her hand to every single solitary question because she did not want to be a juror. The three black other people who were in the room were all excused for whatever reason they gave. It was not a jury of my peer. It was a jury of the police's peers. When they came to the decision that the police were cleared of any wrongdoings or killing my son, it was like another slap in the face. For the whole year of 2020, I was in and out of depression. COVID didn't help. I kept debating, should I continue to fight? Is it ever gonna get any better? You look at the White House and the same stuff that's happening on the local level is happening on the uh, federal level, on the state level. So who do we go to? There is not a nonprofit where I can go and say a police officer killed my son, I need some services. It's not geared just for people who've been afflicted by police brutality. You have places where mothers who are losing kids, they can go to the Peace Institute. There's Mothers for Justice and Equality. There is Legacy Lives On. There's all these programs of wholeness and wellness. And yes, I joined them all. But when it came to justice, I didn't get that. So I am still broken. I still have not received justice. And the kicker is I work for the courts. I've been overlooked. I've been passed over. And I sat there and allowed it. I kept saying because of the climate we're in, nothing was going to change. The whole 2020, as I'm in depression, I reached out to God. I fully committed to give myself because I needed more than what I was given. 
And that's what got me out here today. My son deserves better. I deserve better. We all deserve better. And it is time to start holding our superiors and start passing them around from agency to agency. No, it is not okay to be a mayor. Close your eyes to police brutality and then say, I'm going to be head of the employment department for the state. We don't want that. We want changes, we want action, and we want accountability. For the officers who keep slapping these same officers on the wrist every time they do something, it's time for you to step down. We are not going to continue to pay for these officers to commit these crimes and then you let them step down and resign, but yet our taxes are still covering their retirement, their nest egg. What about our nest egg? What about my son? It took me a long time to get rid of the anger that I was carrying inside of me. Because the first thing they say is, that's an angry black woman. Y'all can label me, you can call me what you want, but when I get justice, that's what I want to hear you say. Carla got justice. Carla got what she deserved. Carla's son's ne did not, son Burrell did not die in vain. Carla made some changes, and not just by herself, but everybody who's standing here. We can't keep being quiet to my white counterparts, my white friends. You keep asking, what can you do? Open your mouth. Stop being silent. I go to court and I work beside you and you tell me how much you care. If you care, open your goddamn mouth. We have a new administration coming in. We have the same city council people, and I'm not saying they're all bad, who are running for this seat. We need to start creating people that's standing on this ground running for those seats. We need to start educating us ourselves about cherry sheets and the money that's coming in and how this government runs and their policy because that dictates what comes into here and how they serve and represent us. We need to start holding them accountable from City Hall to the State House to Congress. Don't forget, they work for us so we can hold their feet to the fire. That rioting crap that just went on, there's a better way to do that. Through the same policies that they implement, we need to understand them, learn them, and use them to our benefits. We have attorneys out here in this crowd, I know we do. I know we have accountants. I know we have all kinds of people that come from different kinds of background. All this is is a vicious circle of denial, racism, and discrimination. And if we create this little circle and put people in the education department to, de to fight, the health care department, the criminal justice, everything that we feel that's not going right, we create this bubble and work from the inside out, we can accomplish a lot. I think we need to start, or someone, we can't let Trump get away with all these pardons of all these people when we have people who are sitting in jail for selling marijuana for years that should have received these pardons that are not. So we should be reaching out to our legislature and our city councils and saying, you all need to put something together that says these illegal pardons that you're giving out, we're not going to honor because you're a corrupt president, you've been impeached, nothing you do should be honored. And we got to come together, put our heads together and figure out how we can get our legislatures to work for us, whether it's local, state, or federal. Thank you. Justice for the law. Right on. Let's give it up for Carla Sheffield. Bo Ramsey, say his name. 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 All right, I'm going to bring up uh, Brother Abdi from EC Against Racism. He's going to speak on some of these demands. No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no racist, no racist, no racist, no Let me hear you, please. No justice, no peace, no justice, no peace, no racist, 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 no racist,
thank you so much for being here. This is actually one of my favorite events of the year because MLK Day is not a day we should be sitting, but it should be a day that we should be on, on our streets demanding justice for all of us. Um, I love coming out every year. This is gonna be probably my fifth year that I came out. This is a wonderful day. It's not cold. We used to come when it was very, very cold, so I'm thrilled. We're here in a beautiful day. I'm gonna keep my remarks very short. I know that we would like to move on and be on the streets, but I have two messages for you today, which is the movement for black lives is not a moment, but it is a movement. People came out in June and July and August and they were all the streets but what happened when they put Joe Biden in the office? Everybody went back in. We want those people who were on the streets to come out and be with us because black lives are still in danger at the hands of the police. We saw that in Ohio where they killed two men. We saw that in Minnesota where they killed another. What we saw on June 6 was exactly what America is. When they tell us this is not America, we say this is exactly what America is. Because white supremacy has, has terrorized us. ICE is terrorizing East Boston, yanking our immigrant communities. They called us essential workers, but they do not give us what we deserve. In East Boston, we are an, in crisis, created by who? Marty Walsh. Marty Walsh created housing crisis in East Boston, where our communities are being evicted in the middle of this global pandemic. Don't let them tell you otherwise. And my second message is, Joe Biden is no better than anyone because he is another mediocre. Look at his cabinet. The last one he appointed is who? Samantha Powers. And what did Samantha Powers do? She destroyed him, her, and Obama, and Susan Rice destroyed Libya. So we, as they inaugurate tomorrow, or whatever day, we need to meet them in a full opposition and demand justice for all because black lives still, every day, matters. Those are the two messages that I wanted to tell you. It is, it's, it's incredibly an honor for me to be here with this absolute organization. Really, it's all about the work. I have known them for years, and I am honored to be here today, standing in solidarity and supporting this organization and the mothers who are here. And what we are demanding is, what? We open all the cases because we didn't knock doors for nothing for Rachel Rawlings. We are here to do our job and reopen all the cases. Thank you very much. Right on, right on. Give it up to EC against racism as Abdi. Hey, so we came to march, right? We came to make some noise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. So we are about to do that. Uh, we're gonna hear from just only a couple more speakers because we gotta get moving. Everyone who's gonna participate in the car caravan, just want to make sure that when you do so, uh, put on your hazard lights and uh, we'll, we'll proceed that way. So uh, we're gonna just uh, get ready to go. Um, I don't know if uh, Alex from City Life is here. Okay. So ESG Against Racism, I'll just say something about it. You can do this in your co own community, all right? Mass action um, against police brutality, if you look at our social media, it's 617, right? That we put on the end. The intention is that we're going to have mass action all across the country in every single area code. So you need to...
see what's going on in your own community. And when things happen, you step right in. When Abdi was on his way to work and he saw ice creeping up on some dude, he was a little late for work that day because he was watching that dude's back, okay? So we're all going to do that. We are all going to do that. We are mass action. Hey, good man. Hang in there. What you been up to? Same what up, thing? beautiful people? My name's Alex, okay, and I'm with cool. City Life in Urbana. Yeah, look at everything. We are a housing yeah, rights easy. organization. We have been fighting for people, for people's homes for over 40 years. And as we gather here on Martin Luther King Day, I remember learning about Martin Luther King in like in school when I was a little kid. And the way they teach it in school, you think that we're in a post-race society. I remember graduating middle school thinking everything's good. We passed the Civil Rights Act and, and things should be better now. But I was going to Boston Public Schools, so I was in a really tight little bubble. It wasn't until I graduated and, and, and I experienced I've been experiencing racism all my life. I just didn't have anything else to compare it to until I saw how other people did. And I was like, there's still so much work to be done. Even today, I think about and I wonder, are things better now? As mass incarceration is peaking, and as people are being evicted from their homes, as our capital is being attacked by white supremacists, are, are things better now? No, they're not. The wealth gap is, is increasing ever wider every single day. And this eviction crisis, this foreclosure crisis that we're in right now, is only going to make things much worse. The only thing that gives me reassurance is seeing all you guys here today. The only thing that, that keeps me pushing forward is hearing testimonies from these families who's, who have lost loved ones and seeing them vulnerable in front of all you guys and sharing their story. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me in the fight. So I want to just end on that. That's the only thing that's going to save us. That we keep working together, we keep community strong, and we connect all these issues that affect us so that we can see change. Thank you all for inviting us. And oh, one last thing before I get off. If you know somebody who needs help paying rent, or are threatened with eviction or foreclosure, I want you guys to give them this phone number. It's a hotline number to our organization. For folks that speak English, it's 617-934-5006. And para personas que hablan español y necesitan ayuda con su vivienda, por favor, llama a este número, 617-397-3773. Gracias. Thank you. Give it up for City Life. Ah, from City Life, y'all. And next we got George Kelly from uh, Labor Union Local 2331. Good afternoon, America. My name is George. I'm Kelly from Labor Union Local 223. And I just want to ask a mathematical political equation. If you work 40 hours in the state of Massachusetts, you should be able to afford an apartment that's sponsored in the housing and urban development HUD. When congressional money comes, when funding comes to housing and urban development, it doesn't go to the mayor. It doesn't go to the governor. It goes to your congressman. So we need to have a new law that states if you work 40 hours, you deserve to have an apartment that's HUD funded according to the size of your family. I've been building housing, I've been building housing in this city for 30 years. I help build them houses over there. But you got homeless people working over here in the supermarkets and they can't afford an apartment. So I'm saying all nine congressional leaders, they're guilty of the 13th Amendment that says involuntary servitude and slavery is unconstitutional. So we need to have a new law. If you work 40 hours, you deserve to have an apartment at one third of your income if you make under the threshold of the prevailing wage Bacon Davis Act, which is thirty, which is now thirty-nine dollars an hour. If you make under thirty-nine dollars an hour, 
You deserve to have an apartment according to the size of your family at one third of your income. This is not communism. It's fair. It's just. Thank you. All right, uh, can we have an interpreter come over here? All right, we only got two more speakers and we out of here, all right? Uh, we're going to hear from Kosecha next. Uh, they are calling in. What's her name? What? I'm not connected. Uh, can Haley come up here? Now everybody wants you to check out Mass Action website, MAAPB.org. Uh, we're going to have more educational activities coming up for Black History Month. And more actions. What? Okay. Uh, we just need an interpreter. Hi all, my name is Scott, I'm an ally organizer with Movemento Cosecha, Cosecha, Massachusetts. Uh, one of our immigrant leaders, uh, Enerma, is going to be right on in a moment. Um, Movemento Cosecha, Cosecha, Massachusetts stands in solidarity as one with mass action against police brutality and the BIPOC community. Police and ICE are one in the same and have accosted the um, immigrant community on and on. So hold on one second for Irma. I would like to say dignity is a birthright. Dignity is a birthright. It is our duty to fight. It is our duty to win. We must love. 